of of these spherical uh, phenomena. I have examples of these things uh, 300 miles away, uh, close to the ship. But, so I feel there's enough there to, uh, to, to I didn't want to freak out the uh, ask, you, know, you felt that there might have been a bit much. <laughs> Well, to, I, to I'd already, all I'd already uh, seen Professor Weinberg's reaction, and you really have to be right with them to hold their hand. And I just felt that he might st stop the emails. We were absolutely knocked out that this man started talking to us. It was the first time that I've ever heard of a senior Major League JPL NASA player literally discussing what is on the tapes. It's an example of the tether, which is a a 12 mile long uh, electrical 100 million dollar satellite controlling uh, electrical an electrical experiment yes I'm not a scientist I apologize for that but uh, you know I'll get you these details but they and this tether um, they are busy showing us from the moment it broke to the moment it's 300 miles away and at every point... It broke? Yes, mysteriously it broke just in the right place. If it broke a little bit too close to the shuttle, it would have taken the shuttle out. If it had broken a little further on, it would have take, maybe destroyed the wing or something, you know? Because you hear the astronauts say, well, it couldn't have happened in a better place. <laughs> and then, um, just to continue uh, on, on the uh, distance, as the, these things started swarming it, and, and as this thing drifted away, they're continually showing us, or NASA, I guess, you know, through the downlink, the, this hundred million dollar satellite. And the phenomena followed the satellite. This is the second, the, yeah, the, the, the spherical, spherical phenomena. The spherical phenomena. And um, Are NASA commenting on, on these things as no, this is happening? No, oh, at one point they asked, and the astronaut says, well, it's a little bit of debris or something, like you'd think you'd know, that follows us around, sort of. That's, you know, it wasn't like, oh, this is this, and then they dropped it. There's, there's a few of these things in the, in the, the uh, footage, or are there, I, I are there a lot of them? There's more than a lot. <laughs> if you've ever seen a hornet's nest after you've thrown a rock at it, you know, that's what it's like. And how do you count the hornets? So I'm, they're all going in different directions. And I use tricks like fast forward because when you go in fast forward, if they're all stars, they all go in the same direction. You know, these things are all sure. moving. But what was very interesting is they're saying, how far is the tether? Well, the tether is now 100 miles. And, and they zoom with their incredible zoom in on it. And you see some of these, these uh, spheres in front of the tether and some of absolutely clearly, no problem at all, they're behind the tether. And if the tether's 12 miles, and these are half the size of the tether going behind it at 100 miles away, they're not specks of ice. Well, even for me, I'm, I find it hard to believe that they could be crystals then if, yeah, if they're Yeah, but, but again, that. I'm merely saying that, you know, I'd, I'd like, that, that I'm just saying what they can't be. And, and the, I've never heard of a, of a, a six-mile ice crystal that's spotted crystal clear 100 miles away, you know, et cetera. So, um, there's, there's hundreds of those examples. Um, they, then they've called them on the different videos. One time they said they were shooting stars and meteors. Then the same phenomenon appears on the next flight and it's ice crystals. And then the next phenomenon appears on the next flight and it's debris. You see, you see what I mean? They've already established it on STS 70 something that it's... That it's I, I that seem it's to remember shooting, something about fireflies at one shooting stage from stars. a long, long time ago. I believe this uh, spherical phenomena first appeared to John Glenn uh, it, as early as 1962. And um, he did, f and, and it continued. We have documentation uh, from various publications that shows that they uh, no, clearly, they, they didn't have an answer for three to four space flights. They had an answer to what, you know, the blue haze around the Earth is, you know, it's, uh, they had an answer to just about everything else. But there's this very interesting thing about three or four flights in, where it says, John Glenn's fireflies spotted over Perth. They're still calling them John Glenn's fireflies. And we have an astronaut making the comment on the 25th anniversary of the moon flight, he says, it's hard to believe, but he says it's a fact that 
we thought that John's fireflies, again, Glenn's fireflies, were living critters. Now, at no time have I, I've read everything, and at no time have I ever heard that before, that NASA concluded originally that the fireflies were alive. So, so they were still calling them John Glenn's fireflies four flights in. There's another interesting thing. If you look at John Glenn's original photos, which I have, which he bought, he bought a camera at a Cocoa Beach drugstore, even though the shuttle or the, the whatever capsule that <laughs> I've forgotten, even though they had a camera on that, he took his own. And when he saw the fireflies, and it's all documented, and you, it's even in the movie The Right Stuff, he holds the camera up while the fireflies are above his head, and he says, I better film or you guys are going to think I'm nuts. And when you see those pictures, and you see the pictures of the shuttle today and the mirror, it's, you see the same phenomena. Sounds Little, like it might be an, spherical. an interesting exercise to show John Glenn the footage that you've now got and let him comment uh, on that. I challenge NASA, JPL, Story Musgrave, astronauts, and especially James Holberg to debate me because it's one of those situations where if they haven't done the homework I've done and they don't have the video I have and they haven't done the research and that they don't have a chance I wouldn't be able to downlink what I got I wouldn't be able to find the things I found and do it consistently like I have been able to do if, 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 if NASA really wanted to hide it Although you did mention to me, Martha, and that they shifted a, a satellite at one stage. Or yes, they've done some shifty things, and there, there are um, military people as well as the, the non-military people. For instance, there's a flight I have where there's, it's basically the entire flight was the control room except for the spacewalk. The spacewalk was to test the new backpacks, and it's a famous uh, walk because the fellow flipped around, the astronaut flipped around and couldn't stop. So that's what made the news. But if you look at the whole spacewalk, and everybody in the media had the chance, there's a, po a point where he says, there's an Mark, will you look out there? There's an object right in front of you. Um, uh, and, the, uh, and the military fellow says, I don't know what you're talking about. Now just think to yourself, if, if I said there's a bee about to sting you, wouldn't you go, I wonder where that is, or something other than, I don't know what you're talking about. First of all, what do you mean you don't know what I'm talking about? If I'm in outer space and I'm flying around and my partner says there's an object in front of you, I wouldn't say, I don't know what you're talking about. And then his next line is, never mind. And then the third astronaut says, am I missing something? And he says, don't worry, the, the lens filter came off, now confirming the size and how close it must have been going and it's flying off at a 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock now when they first mentioned the object the the shuttle camera you couldn't see it so i wasn't looking for it they drew my attention to it i looked and there the object emerged and the third thing he's saying to the third astronaut is don't worry about it don't worry about it you know it's the camera filter and then he even confirms off 10 11 o'clock 10 11 o'clock you know and then there's a pause and the control, uh, control room below tells them to stay vector. Shut up. Stay on course. Continue with what you were supposed to do. And then they continue as if nothing happened. As if, if nothing had happened. Yet, I've, it's right on tape. Audio, video, and you see the object they're referring to. So, but my point was, they didn't hide that from me. They, they're challenging us to find it and I my only question is how come there aren't more of us out there finding I, I this is a big world and most humans love mysteries and the video is available if and many people have home dishes I, and even though NASA moved the satellite almost onto the horizon after they found out what we were doing um, we still were able to get the satellite. I just don't see, I don't see, um, I've had no agents at my house. I've communicated with the C Canadian Space 